Kayla and Jim and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. So today we are going to talk about the questions that a lot of our subscribers have mentioned below in the comments over the past few months on college questions. College questions. We've already tackled a number of college questions. You can yes. see some of our previous videos and yep, we'll pop up the playlist of college there, advice. There you go. So, but we're going to do is uh, some of these questions may be similar to those and some might be some duplicates, but overall these are newer questions. Uh, from recent times, so yeah. you know, we're gonna go ahead and tackle that in this video. So in no particular order. In no. <laughs> let's go ahead and we'll start with uh, this one here. First piece of advice is to make sure that whatever class you're taking is a transferable class because you don't want to be the one that shows up to a four-year university <laughs> and it's like, I have all of these credits from community college, but they don't transfer for what I need. <laughs> I took 64 credits at my community college and only 12 transferred in. <laughs> you don't want to be that person. <laughs> you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Nope. So keeping that in mind, um, some specific classes that are always good to get out of the way, um, all your gen ed, you can do that anywhere. Get rid of those in the beginning, so that way when you transfer to a four-year degree, you can just focus on your actual major and you'll be taking classes with your classmates in atmospheric sciences. It'll be a little bit easier because you won't be flip-flopping between like, oh, I have to write an essay and oh, I have to do calculus. You can just focus on the calculus. I had a uh, advisor. I was gonna say guidance counselor. It's like this isn't high school, Jim. Yeah. Uh, I had an advisor in college that actually helped me talk to other advisors at the four-year college in the atmospheric science program, and we could compare what needs to be taken at the community college that would be transferred in for their program in the four-year college. So I got a lot of my Englishes out of the way. Uh, I took a lot of computer science stuff. Um, I took uh, all my chemistry, all yep. my physics. Yep. I got a lot of that stuff all out of the stuff. way. All and right. so when I transferred in as a junior, just about every single credit actually transferred in. Yep. One other tip, and this was true for back in 100 years ago, um, and that is, is that if you can graduate from the community college with an AS degree, yep. that actually satisfies a few requirements at the four-year college, so there's a few other gen eds you don't have to take yep. because the degree satsifies it. Yep. So finish, don't just transfer the credits and not get your Make AS sure you degree. Get, degree. get your AS degree yep. or AA, depending on which path you're traveling, broadcasting yep. or whatever, but get your associate's degree from your community college because that actually shows you know, you've completed something and yep. it meets a few other requirements at the four-year college. Yep. So while you're in school, uh, and we're assuming you're in the four-year program at this yeah. time, um, are there opportunities to say, let's say here you're here in the U.S., but maybe there's um, you want to study weather in the in the Alps or Himalayas or something like that? Are there study abroad programs for that? Now for this, I would highly, highly, highly recommend if you are going to do study abroad or if you're interested in study abroad, doing it in your second year or at the very latest the beginning of your third year at a four-year university. Your last couple semesters have to be at your school, plus there are very specific atmospheric science classes that you have to take depending on which school you're going to. So if you are looking to study abroad, it would have to be in your sophomore or junior year, and you would have to make sure that whatever college you're going to in whatever country is going to transfer those credits back, because I know some universities are real finicky about that, especially with such a small degree like meteorology. And I think most of the study abroads are done at a time when you have an extended period to be away yeah. from school, like summertime. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there are summer trips or summer research opportunities. That's a different category, but... The best thing to do is to work with your advisor. Yeah. They would know. They have a lot they of... They got all the specifics. They have a lot of information. They, they've worked on it. Those folks would definitely be able to help you out with that. Yep. So we definitely touched on this a little bit in other videos, but if you're looking for a very, you know, familiar atmosphere, you're gonna get lots of help from your professors, really small school feel with only a couple students, definitely go for one of those smaller universities like the one that I went to was UNC Asheville. My class size was 
nine or ten people. So if you're looking for really small and intimate and getting to know everybody and being friends with everybody and getting lots of help and advice from your professors, go for that. But there are a ton of perks of going to a bigger school as well. That's right, because bigger schools tend to have more resources and more they opportunities. Get more funding. They have yeah. more options. They're normally yeah. in bigger cities right. or bigger areas. Yep, more opportunities. They might be closer to a National Weather Service office or, or a TV station that you might want to work with or some other private corporation or yep. something like that. So there's trade-offs. You know, yeah. big schools, they might have bigger funding, but they also carry bigger class sizes yeah. too. So the interaction with, with your professor, depending on the professor, you know, could be, be more personable different. with a smaller school versus a larger school. It just depends. Yeah. Uh, specifically, UNC Asheville had a great undergraduate program for doing research. If that's yeah. something you want to do, yeah. the class sizes are smaller because the college is smaller. And we didn't have a graduate program, so all the research was done by undergraduates. Whereas the bigger schools, most of the funding goes to the graduate program. So if you're looking to do research as an undergraduate, probably not going to get the funding as, as much as like the graduate students in the graduate programs, um, yeah. especially for atmospheric sciences where there's not much funding right. to begin with. <laughs> right. And this question pertains more to those that are in their junior and senior year of high school. Um, yeah, those looking to You know, as you're to looking decide. to, you know, what college, you know, you've yeah. made the commitment, this is what I want to do. You know, you need to reach out to uh, the advisors there. Um, okay, so, and I lost my page, so hold on, bear with me here for a second. My, uh, Coffee sip. Coffee time. We need, like, a coffee table in front of us. We don't have to keep I didn't realize around. I... is going to be a, kind of a two or three part answer to this question because you can go a few different ways. A, I will start out by saying that atmospheric sciences as a whole is a very big math major. So you do have to know that going into it. Very, very heavy in math. Very heavy in math. If you're not good at math, there's a difference between not liking and not good. So you have to make the <laughs> distinction, which one are you? If you don't like it, but you like meteorology, then I say that you could definitely succeed as a meteorology major. I knew plenty of my friends who hated math, but still got through the major because they loved atmospheric sciences. If you can't do math, that's a little bit different because you're going to have to do a lot of it. So my advice to those who aren't good at math is there are options like minoring in atmospheric sciences. That way you cut down drastically on the math requirements. You can just take a couple like intro courses and get your feet wet and at least like learn a little bit about it. Or you can do like a sister major, like environmental studies or geology or something like that, where you kind of get the earth sciences mixed in there, but they're not the heavy math calculus differential equations that atmospheric science is. Right, exactly. One other approach to this, and kind of looking at this a little outside the box, Let's say you want to be a meteorologist, but, but you're just not good at math, but you try hard at it. So one other way to approach this is smaller class sizes where you have more interaction with a tutor and more interaction with the professor. One angle is, is to go to a community college because usually your Calc 1 classes at a community college, on average, are somewhere around, you know, 30 to 40 students. Whereas a four-year university, you're looking at a couple hundred students in the lecture hall. Yeah. So if you need more of that assistance, it's very possible that going the route of a community college to get those mathematical courses Out under your way. belt, yeah. that might be more beneficial to yeah. you. Knowing professors or having friends that are really good at math and pairing up with them or going to your professor's office hours and sitting down and being like, listen, I have no idea how to do this. If you're at a school that gives you the opportunity to meet people like that or have professors or tutors like that, you will definitely succeed more than just going to a big name school for atmospheric sciences and being one of hundreds in the back of the classroom, so. And our disclaimer, which as you've heard earlier in this video, make sure it's accredited and transfers to the fourth year school. Because you don't <laughs> want to be stuck doing Calc 3 again! <laughs> or Calc 2! Calc 2 is the literal worst! And I love math! Calc 2 sucks! <laughs> I'd rather do Calc uh, 3 or Diff E over Calc differential 2. Differential equations is oh. easier. 
let's say you want to become a weather meteorologist with the National Weather Service, uh, someone had suggested that the NOAA weather site actually has a list of accreditations, what they're looking yep. for, schools that, um, you schools know, that they offer would, those. That, yep. um, and I know uh, the schools that do offer all the requirements for the NWS will list it underneath their atmospheric science major page. It'll say, um, fills all the requirements for NWS. So look for that phrase underneath atmospheric sciences on their page. Um, yep. And yeah, that'll take care of that one. For and you. it'll say, you know, how many credit hours in your major and so yep. on and so forth. It's got all the details out there. You can yep. check that out. So if you want to be part of the National Weather Service here in the U.S., the NOAA website has got all the details for you. That's, that's pretty big. That, um, um, that might be a, a dive in deeper <laughs> for another let's, video. Let's give them the short so, answer. Uh, we'll, we'll give you the spark notes and if you want a bigger explanation, let us know and- Comment we'll, below yeah. if you want more details on yeah. this particular question here. But I mean, you could go anyway after college. I knew friends that got jobs before they graduated. I know friends that it took two years to get jobs in their major. That's my thoughts on that. What about, what about you? <laughs> um, the best thing to do is even if you're in community college is try to become part of the groups that you you have interests in like if you're yeah. interested in uh, the national weather service or something like that see if there's a local american meteorological society chapter most schools hit, have it yeah, yeah. Uh, hit up your local television station or radio station that has some sort of uh, meteorology, not program, but internship, a meteorologist yeah. or an internship. Yeah. Try to see what you can do, whether yeah. you're in, in community involved. college, yeah, whether you're in community college or a four-year college. Uh, start using uh, and ask your advisors um, uh, internships. What internships are available? Yeah. Gives you a chance yeah. to play around for a few months and or you know whatever the length of time is. And you might have an opportunity to do, you know, two or three different internships over the course of your yeah. academic career to know this is where I want to go. Uh, that's not what I want to do. Yeah. Well, I had a friend that was like dead set on being um, a forecaster and going into the NWS and stuff, and then just was interning everywhere, trying out everything, tried a broadcast internship, and found out absolutely loved it and that's their career now and like changed their life completely so don't be afraid to branch out and try different internships too and a lot of times in meteorology it's not what you know but who you know so if you're trying all these different things you never know who's connected to who it's a really small community so if you know this person you might know this person then you could get a job over here you know it just kind of goes like that <laughs> yep yep and you may have to be uh well you definitely have to be flexible because yeah, as you discover flexible. in the internships um the pathways for employment and and the pay scales and stuff like that if you make decision to go there then you can adjust your uh, academics yep. so that you can say you know wow I, I really don't need this class I can get right. into this one over here because that's going to help me on my path to go there yeah now it depending on what you've taken already and how late you are in your academic career yeah. it might push it out another six months maybe another year it depends it's not discouraging but remember if you're looking at your long-term goal being I want to work in something I love adding the extra six months or or so might be worth it for you so that you take the yep. right courses and get into the right job. All right. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I got that on camera. Awesome. <laughs> oh, I fell on the floor. <laughs> so if you like what you saw today, go ahead and click like and click subscribe as well. Leave us a comment below uh, what you think. If there's additional questions that you want us to address, um, commenting to any of the questions that we've already said. Um, and I think we will do a, uh, another video to expand on that yeah, last we'll question. Definitely, there, there's, always, there's always more college advice to give, so we'll definitely do a part three, four, sixteen, whatever we want, <laughs> right. eventually. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and, uh, and also, you can go see us on our other social media, Facebook and Instagram, popping up right here. Bing! <laughs> <laughs> as well as our Patreon page to yep. help support us continue to do what we're doing. So uh, we really enjoy doing this and bringing you guys this kind of content. It's just awesome. Yep. So all those links will be down in the description if you want to check them out. There you go. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And happy collaging. Mm-hmm. <laughs>